Hello, everybody, and welcome. This is Adrian, and I'm here with Brightman19. How's it going, guys? I am Brayman19. Welcome back. What is this week two, Adrian? Week two of Eat, Sleep, Game, Repeat. Our I talk know, show. We made the week two. Podcast season thing. One, I know, episode I know. It's, just, it's, it's like the it's second weird. Time. It's weird. The second part. <laughs> was it that what they say you got to do something like for three weeks for it to be a habit or something yeah. so i guess yeah. if we do this next week or the following week or that then uh i guess you're all stuck with us i i, I guess yeah. that's the only way to put it so <laughs> <laughs> all right so we got some we got some interesting topics for you guys <laughs> my my moderator coach coach she says eat sleep game repeat electric boogaloo 2 <laughs> <laughs> we got some uh, we got some topics guys it is it really has been a busy ass week for just everything. It's kind of crazy to be perfectly honest. So yeah. let's go on and jump on in guys. And um, please make sure to tune in every Sunday. Well, at least hopefully most Sundays. So we can, we can have this, this podcast show of ours. I don't even know what it is. If it's a podcast or a show, I have no idea. <laughs> I don't know either. I, I mean, and honestly, if I'm going to be here every, you know, at nine Eastern every week, I'm going to be here. <laughs> I, I, there, there, there may or may not be a show, but and I'll, but I'm going to be here one way or another. Um, I'm like pretty damn sure I will be here. Hopefully. <laughs> so. All right. So, um, yeah. do you, okay. Do you have any preference on what topic we start on first? What are you thinking? No, I, I, I really don't. Um, you know, funny thing. I mean, I guess this isn't really to talk about our weeks, but Adrian, I think you're going to be more up to date, up to date this week than I am. Just, uh, you know, I mean, I've had a heck of a, I have a heck of a long week. I don't know about you, but between being on the road for work three of the five days and the other two days just being dog sick, I've missed out on so much news this week. I've caught up on some things. So, Adrian, I'm going to kick it off to you. And I, I think I'll be a lot of reaction uh, this video more than anything. So, uh, anyways, let's go ahead and hop in, man. I'm ready to go. Yeah. I guess let's start with uh, IR today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, honestly, it's been a busy week for me, too. But there's been a lot of news. Um, obviously, on the 25th, which was last Thursday, Imperator Rome did release. And there's been a huge, huge reaction. People either, like, love this game or people fucking hate this game. Okay. And and eventually, uh, Paradox actually released not one, but two different posts on, on their Paradox forum. One of them is a roadmap about where the game is going to be going. And then the other one is kind of explaining explaining the game development process. So as far as the roadmap, um, it's, it's kind of long. So, you know, uh, I'm not going to talk completely about it here, but um, in Imperator Rome, they're looking to change the balancing of technology progress. They're looking to change mercenaries. They're looking to change truce breaking. Um, apparently assassinations are too easy. They're looking to change governors. They're looking to change war exhaustion, um, legitimacy systems in, in monarchies, just all sorts of stuff. I mean, it really, they, they have a patch that they've nicknamed Pompeii and it's, it's supposed to come out in June. They're aiming it for June release. Mm -hmm. just, there's just a lot of stuff. I mean, it's, it seems to be a lot of changes to core gameplay mechanics, um, which is interesting. Uh, well, I mean, I think you look here and a lot of the things that, you know, there's actually going to be kind of a hot fix coming out here next week, actually, um, 1.0.1, which they're calling Demetrius, uh, will be coming out. And I think that's, you know, that's kind of the, I think that's to address a lot of the issues that people have right this second. Yep. Um, you know, because apparently a lot of people have problems with like the AI and, and I have not experienced this I, I, in my playthrough is Egypt, which is the only thing I've done. I haven't touched another nation yet. So I don't know, like, say, maybe Adrian does over here, but the AI, to, you know, the AI apparently needs some working. I guess they're too easy. That's the only thing I can think of. Um, some fixing of the compatibility issues that people are having game crashes and there's some like multiplayer problems, which haven't seen really the multiplayer problems. Uh, game crashing. I got that like on the first time I ever opened up the menu. Yep. Like I had that issue there. Um, not really anywhere else. Um, you know, I, I really... I don't know. I didn't really experience a lot of what uh, people were saying they were having the problems with, but uh, I don't know. I mean, for, I guess well, there's a lot of controversy around the start of it and I'm just not jumping the fence to trying to burn the barn down. That's just not me. I, I mean, I have to admit. So, so for the stuttering, um, you guys, you guys might know this. If you're, if you're watching me on YouTube, one of my let's plays, my Armenia let's play. Um, I actually can't continue with that campaign because there, there does seem to be some sort of, I want to say it's a bug, 
I've encountered it in a couple campaigns, but only in my Armenia campaign was it like, okay, I can't play anymore. It's just, mm. it's just this like stutter. You, you get to a certain point in the game and you try and, and play and it just stutters and it like freezes. The game can't progress. You have to like alt tab out. You have to exit the game. It kind of resembles like, um, like a memory leak, you know, as if like there's, there's a, a leak somewhere in the code and the game just can't progress further. And, and I'm not sure to what extent people have experienced something similar, but from from what I've seen, it seems like that's actually a fairly common thing for people. Like, oh, I can't progress through the game anymore. You know, I can't get through this stuttering. The game runs like shit, especially in the later years. And initially, I kind of thought it was a one-off thing, but I guess it's more common than than I thought was believed. You know, um, so that was that was interesting. And in that sense, I can relate to you guys at home who've who may have experienced this problem. Um, you know, things with the AI and stuff like that. I mean, I do think it's kind of an easy game. Then again. It is 1.0. It's version 1.0 of this game. I think there's a lot of refinements that can be made and will be made over time. I think everybody was expecting it to be like EU4, which, you know, for anybody who's played a Paradox game at launch, they'll know that that's, that's not, you know, it's not how it's probably going to be. You know, EU4 has had years of development. It's It's been um, a long time coming. And so I think people had unrealistic expectations for Imperator Rome at the same time. A lot of the criticisms they have are warranted. I mean, I, I talked about some of these in my own review. You know, there's there's things with the, with the game that are eh, that are lackluster. I think they, they could have been done better. But I still like the game. I mean, I, I don't know. What about you? Is there things that you, you find boring or you don't like or things you agree with? or, or what? What's I up? mean, again, my, my, my experience does not... I did not get to taste, get the full flavor of the game like everybody else did. I've had very limited amounts of time. I've recorded 14 episodes of it. I mean, I think I've only released like 10 or 9 or 10 of them. I mean, I didn't... I don't know yet. You know, I, I really... I'm enjoying the game. I don't want anybody to think that I'm not. Um, the game is still so new to me that I can't really get a good, and especially, let me tell you, Egypt's just a large nation. You can't get a good idea. You're, you're just beating up on neighbors at the, you know, as far as sure. I can tell for the first 20, 30, 40 years, just beating up everybody around you. I'm not really seeing a, a real difficulty to the game, at least not until the final two or three episodes of my current campaign where, and I mean, spoiler alert, I'll tell you now, I mean, it was, I was facing some little nation to the South. I can't remember their name. Kush. I want to say yep. it was, or, and then out of, you know, as soon as I'm getting ready to fight these guys and I get done with this, I get a civil war pop up, you know, oh, damn. And okay. Civil wars are difficult. I, I, I don't care what they say. And maybe it's just because of the type of player I am. I mean, everybody knows when it comes to paradox games, I am in no way, shape or form, even a competent player. I mean, at least not my opinion. I mean, I can, I'm not always there. And it, these civil wars pop up and I mean, your half your country is gone to begin with. For those of you who've never experienced it, half your country is gone. You're dealing with these situations where they've got a large army generally. I mean, you barely have, you have a little bit of knowledge. You have like in 12 months, there's going to be a civil war. You, yep. you, you, you got to start preparing like right now. And the only thing to prepare is get as much army as you can build together and get, get, get ready to go. And you don't know where it's popping. You just know the one guy who's going to start it. Yep. And they took the entire Southern half of the country and it took me forever to beat them back enough, bleeding them of manpower, bleeding me of manpower. I mean, I was relying on mercenaries and stuff, to, and they finally came down to it. And, you know, in Egypt, it's kind of easy mode. It's honestly kind of easy mode. Um, I, I know you probably have gotten to play it yet, Adrian, but there's so much money in Egypt that <laughs> just, <laughs> yeah. I yeah. want these mercenaries. They're going to go here. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. My guess, yeah. But yeah. it's literally a <laughs> just you know what dollar bills on all y'all yep. go get me, go, go take out the enemy, you know? And that's really all it is. It's not anything else. And, um, and, and that's the thing too, is, is like, I haven't experienced something like that. Like I haven't even experienced a civil war yet. I've experienced mm. being beaten by the AI, you know, in, in my Epirus campaign. Um, I did kind of like a, like a short narrative video, I guess you will of it. Yeah. And I mean, Rome kicked my ass. Like I fought my, I fought uh, a war in Macedon. I bled myself a manpower, I bled myself a money. And then I got declared on my realm and they sent like 60,000 men after me, dude. And, and, and I lost. And it was, it was honestly some of the most fun I've probably had in a paradox game in quite a long time. You know, it was really fun. I haven't, I haven't even had an experience like that in EU4 lately and, and, and it, it's fresh and it's new. 
Um, mm. You know, I'm not going to say the game is the easiest thing in the world. I don't want to say it's the hardest thing in the world. I mean, you can definitely find ways to play pretty optimally pretty quickly. And you can kind of see, you know, where the wind is blowing. And, and you're like, all right, this mm. AI is okay. It's not, like, amazing. Um, but then maybe you'll get a curveball like, you know, a Civil War. And maybe it'll just kind of throw just a curveball in your whole in your whole game, you know? And I appreciate right. that about and the game. It, yeah, and, you know, it's... I don't think anybody should ever have even thought... This is, you know, this is going to be EU4 out the gate. It's not. That game has had, like, we discussed this last week, that game has had six, seven, eight years of development built into it. That game, like, I, I don't I don't even remember EU4 at the start because I wasn't playing Paradox games a lot, you was know. I. Was I. I wasn't playing Paradox built games at the time. I was playing Paradox distributed games, but I was not playing that. And I can go ahead and tell you, I mean, the only thing I can really go back and sit there and say that was there at the start was HOI 4 and HOI 4 at the very beginning was very easy mode yep. and it may still be. I don't know. I don't play it. I want to, but it's just it's one of those things where you can't expect a whole lot of depth at 1.0 of any game. Yep. Um, if it is, it's a game that's been in development for too long and it's got too much built into it now, you know, if or it's a game that. Ha, you know, or or it's kind of like a game that may have been in there. You know, this hasn't had official releases. You know, things have been stuck in. You know, development early hell. release. Try before yeah. you play. Early for access. For early ever. access. Hell, <laughs> that's exactly what it is. Yeah. It is hell. I, I, I'm not a fan of those games anymore. But thanks to a few select titles, but no, I mean, you you can't get mad at them. I'm I'm happy. The thing that you're gonna have to, that people need to remember about Paradox is that. Look, they're going to patch it. They're going to make it right. 1.0.1 comes out next week. It's going to fix some things. 1.1 comes out in June. And for those of us, you know, who were stuck behind an embargo for so long and unable to talk to you guys about it, we've known about 1.1. Okay. We, we knew it was coming. They've, they warned us ahead of time. Yep. Saying, hey, this is coming. And I think, yeah. And I think maybe that's be why we were a little bit more prepared for the issues we weren't coming in i was not going into impaired rome thinking this game's going to be perfect from the get-go i didn't think it was going to be as complex as ck2 or eu4 i thought it was just going to be a almost you know an eu4 not i won't say clone but an eu4 in roman times yep that's it that's and, all and, i thought was going to be and to be fair like i don't think that's even a wrong description of it. I, I don't think anybody's expecting, you know, oh, I'm going to get a Victoria too in Roman times. Would that be cool? Fuck yeah, that would be cool. But that's not Imperator Rome. That's not what the game is. And and I realize that, you know, and, and I think right. a lot of people had different, they, they didn't temper their expectations the way they should have. You know, I mean, uh, my Twitch chat's kind of pointing out right now to me, you know, um, for a Paradox title, the bugs are relatively tame. I would, I would agree with that. I think there's been yeah. way more worse bugs um, peacetime is the weakest link. I think that's true too. I think everybody needs to remember this is early on. This game is early. It's just released. There's bugs to come. That's All right. True. Don't think, don't <laughs> think that we're just no bugs McGee right now. It's coming out. Okay. There, there, they will, you will something that you can always set with, you know, you could, I would almost put money on it that we're going to get to something like 1.3 there's going to be more bugs than there are things that, you know, improve the game. And then we're going to get 1.3.1 within two days that fixes it all. Yep. I mean, yep. you all just need to remember it's paradox. They fix their problems. They're coming to it. You know, that, that fire on your head is not that big, you yep. know, go ahead and put it out. Okay. Well, we'll let them, let the guys do their job. But I will say, going on to what I think is the second part of this dev diary where they're kind of apologizing, you know, they didn't want, Adrian, did they reach out to you and ask you what you thought? No, no, no. They just gave us a release quality. Yep. Right. And, and I've never had, never had Paradox to reach back out to me, but I think they need to start. Don't you? Um, I, I do think there could be, um, I think that line of communication could be useful. Um, now right. I understand, I understand why they don't do it because they, they, you know, there's a certain decorum, there's a certain, you know, um, a wall, mm -hmm. if you will, that they have to maintain. Um, but I, I do think if there was that line of communication, things would be different, you know, like, um, your, your previewers and your, 
your, you know, review key people, you know, who you give review keys to, um, not only could they release a, a public review when the game is released, but they could also send you kind of development tips privately. I think that would be useful, but right. I mean, we're not beta, we're not beta testers. You know, we're not alpha testers here. I mean, we could be, you know, they, they, they say, Hey, this is a beta test run out there and play, you know, I mean, and say, Hey, we'd like to really know what you think. And you'd probably see about 75 to 80% of the, at least the content creators, we're going to say something about it. If we like a game or if we're looking forward to a game, we're going to say something if we like it or not. Um, and what they, you know, and, and one thing that they have not, they do not do is they don't go out there and tell us, Hey, play it for a couple hours, you know, play 10, 12 hours, whatever you feel and come back into us and tell us what you liked, what you disliked. You know, if, if they would do that, I have a feeling they would be more prepared. I would rather them sit here and tell us, Hey, we're releasing on the 25th as a regular player. Mind you now, not, you know, I would, you know, even if I, you know, I'll, I'll go ahead and say this. I would rather they go and say the embargo is going to last until it's released. And that release could be two weeks longer than the actual release. If they sat there and said, we're going to fix some things real fast. We know we're going to tick people off, but we'd rather tick people off with a game that's unreleased than tick people off with a game that is released and it's not right. Yeah. And, and in and, this case right here, it's obviously easy fixes. They could have yeah. waited four days, five days, fixed it up, patched it up, you know, pat, you know, patted it down and then sent it off in the wild yep. and let everybody else find any new problems or that might maybe out there or just play the game as they kind of intended 1.0 to be played. And, and, and that's the thing is, is, you know, just to kind of wrap up this topic, I, I have to admit for, for the problems that people are experiencing and, and honestly for the criticism that paradox is getting, I do have some respect that paradox, you know, did stick by their deadline and, and did release on the release date. And, and there might be some issues you know, and they're taking this flack that, that some of the flack, I don't really know if they deserve, you know, because, you know, I, I tempered my expectations. If other people didn't, I mean, come on, what, what paradox game at 1.0 was perfect. You know, what paradox game at one ver uh, version 1.0 was, was amazing, you know, and, and there were no bugs and there were no problems. You know, I mean, I, I made the same complaints about hearts of iron four. I still think it is now. I think it's a shallow game. I think it doesn't have a lot of depth. It's a lot of waiting around. And, and now, you know, people look at hearts of iron four and they say, Oh, this is a good, this is a good paradox game. And I'm like, I don't know. I, I like Imperator Rome and I don't like hearts of iron four, <laughs> you know, like, I don't know. I like a game that ju just got released more than a game that's been out three years. <laughs> you know, it's like, I don't know. It, it, and you can't please everybody. And, and I got mad respect that paradox has just said, guys, this is the game. We're releasing it. We're going to fix it. Don't worry. We're not going anywhere. I have a lot of respect right. for them for that. You know, and I guess maybe this is where you and I kind of sit, you know, again, I'm not rushing to go blame them, but I'm also kind of from a, as a guy who's kind of in marketing and PR and, and understands these things really well as being the guy in marketing PR, you know, it's, it's never the developer that has to sit on the front end and go, we're sorry guys, you know, <laughs> it's never them. Okay. It, it's always the guy behind the scenes, you know, I, I work in IT, but I'm kind of the PR guy for the IT team. I, this is what I do. And let me go ahead and tell you, my guy behind me who's doing you know, the majority of that work, he doesn't have to go out there and be, I'm sorry, I did this. I just did it, and it, bro it broke your computer for the next you know, hour and a half. He doesn't listen to the screaming that yeah. I do. In, in my opinion, I, I, I'm a, I'm a big guy of saying, Hey, brand, let's, let's stick to our brand and release things that are prepared and ready to go. I mean, you know, and just reading some of these comments, I'll just read like the first two comments on the dev diary are treating, you know, treat your game like blizzard. We will release it when it's done and you won't have to justify making posts like this again. So did like, you, okay. So this, did you agree with that post or did you disagree? I actually agree with this post. Okay. I don't know nothing about Blizzard. Don't get me wrong. I don't know anything about Blizzard games because I don't play them. But I'm, I, I, when he, they sit here and say, we will release it when it's done. And then you won't have to make justifying posts. I would rather have to wait for a game than play crap. Now, now I'm not saying this is crap. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> and, and, and that's, <laughs> that's why don't that's nobody run out and say Brant's review was it's crap. That's not what I'm saying. And, and that's why I think I do. I disagree with what that guy said, because you know, it's not crap. 
you know, I think Imperator Rome is is fun even in its current state. Yeah. I saw I saw a post on Reddit. Um, a guy said, "I'm glad that Paradox took the risk and released this game, or else we'd have like a Mountain Blade Banner Lord, you know, or we or we'd have like a Half Life Three, you know, we'd have all these different games that have never been released, and people talk about them all the time, you know." And I was like, "Hmm, that's a good point." <laughs> you know? I mean, I guess if. <laughs> I guess that's where you have to have the difference between confirmed. This is coming. It's in the works. It's got a tentative release date. Yep. We're approaching it, but hey, they're going to push that week back. I mean, I think we there's a similar game that did. This. I think it's called Star Citizen. I don't know. Someone, somebody was saying something about it. Mountain Blade Banner what? Lord Star Citizen. There um, was a game and it still sucked at release, though. I oh my gosh called. it happened last year it happened like a year or two ago something about flying in space i have not <laughs> are, you, are you talking about um oh my gosh phil no man's no Man sky yes that one. Oh my gosh <laughs> it had a release date two years prior and it is like yeah. and they decided it's not ready we're not going to release it yet and then it came out two years later it's like well you didn't it's, it's like what did you guys like you, do in those two years <laughs> what did you do for two years you know? like yeah yeah no man's sky i mean yeah. but, you and, know, and there's other games thing, though yeah. Yeah. They t some people do tease games. I get it. You know, it's just it's a weird world we live in with this whole digital yeah. content release. It's yeah, it's yeah. really weird. I, I kind of miss the days where you could go run out to the store and go get a fully complete game there. You know, because you, you couldn't patch this stuff up. I mean, a lot of people have only grown up in this Steam release day where you could buy the game and it was being patched the second you plug in the disc or you download yep. the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of people don't remember the days where, I mean, you go out and buy a game and it was that it was ready to go. Yep. So, I mean, coming as somebody who's been in those days and somebody who's in these days, I mean, I see why we've moved to what we've moved to, but I do wish we'd have more completed games on the, from the get go. Yeah. I, I got to admit a, a, a viewer in my Twitch chat, he makes a good point and he makes a good point. He says, to be fair, a lot of the issues with IR probably wouldn't have been found out until it was in the wild. I do okay. agree with I mean, that. I guess it's a good point. Um, now I don't. I don't want to say you want to release a No Man's Sky because at no. launch that game was shit. That game was absolute <laughs> ass. But I at mean, the same time, I do think he's got a point in saying there's a lot of problems that can't be apprehended until until it's public. I, I'd say well, uh, he's probably right. I think I could I could agree with that in the, in the saying that you know if, if I throw you know in a, in a pond versus a lake I'm more likely to catch the big you know catch the fit you know I'm more likely to catch more fish you know and who can find my problem if I'm throwing out the line of that's a problem you know I'll always catch that and I just kind of realized as I as I kind of want to help us go ahead and clear this one up and move on to the next topic I use a lot of fish relating things for a guy who doesn't <laughs> fish uh, for when it comes to streaming and talking about our streaming and viewing and play and recording games and how to get bigger from using the nets every day and this kind of crap, I use way too much fishing stuff. <laughs> I think, I think I was a fisherman in a past life. Past life. <laughs> Maybe that's why I like whenever like the grand, the, the grand banks or whatever pop-ups come up in you for so much. <laughs> like, I don't know. Maybe that's it. <laughs> oh man. All right. <laughs> All right, let's Wait, see. So we spent, spent a lot of time on, on that topic. EU4. Yep. Let's. So let's talk about EU four. So so EU, actually, I just saw this dev diary too. So um, on EU four, they were talking about some of the quality of life improvements that they wanted to make, and they were also talking about custom nations. So I don't. I didn't actually know this, but apparently, the most played nation in EU four is France. The second most played nation in EU four is apparently a custom nation. Which is fucking crazy because I'll tell you guys right now, in my 1,500 hours, over 1,500 hours of E4, I've never played a custom nation ever. I've never been interested in it. I'm not even sure if I'll still do one. There's a couple of achievements that, that you can get as a custom nation. I might do those, but honestly, I've, I was never like that interested in custom nations. So I thought uh, that was kind of interesting. <laughs> what about you? Never played one. I've never played one. Yeah, no. And I want to play one now so bad. I just don't. <laughs> Just reading this post, I was like, I've never played one. Yeah, no. And like, now I'm getting kind of like the urge just to like, oh, there's EU4 down there in the Steam thing. Let's pull that up. You know, like I really want to go play a custom nation now. Like I need to do it. I just need to go do it. I, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I think it's my my urge to want to go and just be this amazing Western western nation in north america at the beginning of the game i, I think that's <laughs> let me just go beat up on some uh, native americans let's just restart that I, I'll, I'll tell you the only thing that that does interest me a little bit sort of kind of 
is I want to play as a, um, as a Norse nation. So like, you know, like a Viking Norway or something like that. I know there's an achievement that's somehow related to that. So I do mm. want to do that. That sounds like fun. Although I heard for the Norse religion, there isn't a lot of flavor, which, which makes sense. Cause I mean, it's a, you know, it's, it's a custom religion. I guess you would say you can only get it if you have a custom nation. So I do <laughs> want to do that. Maybe I'll do that someday. What is it like a custom, like you jump back over, you, you create your custom nation, I guess in Canada. And then you, Go the other like way. Colonize Europe or some shit as a Norse as a Norse Viking huh. faction. Or I don't know, something like that. I got to read about it. Yeah, something like that. I, I guess you're kind of like the, the lost, the lost, yeah. you know, the lost or something. Inland colony yeah. or something like that. You know, they even yeah, have like, that'd yeah, be it's, cool. It's, it's kind of interesting. I don't know. I got to check out the achievement, but that interests me know. from like a from like a custom nation perspective. That would be cool to do. Yeah. I got to do that. Yeah, that'd be pretty neat. Uh, I mean, I'm interested in trying one now. Just, I mean, it's just piqued my fancy all of a sudden. Like, hmm, what is everybody else doing that I? have an experience so <laughs> i mean but the list of like i mean this is not the purpose of that dev diary i was but th- i mean the the list of nations in there you know there's some that you're not very uh that are listed out here that you know they're not very surprising france being number one i wouldn't say that's super surprising the custom nations was surprising to me me but too me too as two people who've never played them what do you what do we what do we know you know right the third one is uh, the ottomans yeah, so. which which that actually also kind of surprised me because, to be honest, I know the I know the Ottomans are OP as shit in EU four, and they make a really good like late game enemy, which is entirely why I was surprised that people like playing as them. <laughs> it's probably because yeah. they're trying to figure out ways to beat them. I don't know what's the weakness. Yeah. Like I like I I like playing as the Ottomans, but I don't do it very often. I've probably done maybe two campaigns the entire time I've ever played EU four. I think I did my very first campaign was them, and I did one a few months back. And I think I did it that way because I was like, let's see how good I've gotten in a year. Turns out I'm still playing. <laughs> so, yeah, not that great. Anyways, uh, the fourth is Byzantium. I yep. mean, that one kind of surprised me. Um, I that didn't expect one, that it. One, yeah, I expected that I one. I expected it to be a top five. Um, Got a bit. And then the rounding out the top five is Castile. I kind of expect that to be there. England. Uh, what do we say? B-E-R-A? Oh, yeah. B, uh, it's Brandenburg is up there. Expected that one for yep. sure because everybody wants to be Germany. Um, Habs- uh, Habsburgs and Austria. I gotta admit, Austria, Austria surprises me a little bit because um, I do hear a lot that Austria is actually a difficult country to play as. I think in some respects, especially for novice players, people who aren't who, who are beginners, I actually do think Austria is kind of hard. As an experienced player, I think it's it's incredibly easy. That's just me. Um, that one kind of I mean, surprised me. That's I'd- in the top ten. I have to admit. Well, I mean, looking right here, it's over 6% of all games are France. I just kind of realized there's a percentage here. Over 5% are custom nations. Uh, about 4.5% or so are Ottoman plays. Byzantium's somewhere just above 4. Um, let's see. Castile is just below that. And almost tied with it is England. A little bit further down. I mean, I'm just going over the list, guys. Then you go a little bit further down from there, just under four percent. You know, your uh, your Aus- your your Brandenburgs and your Austrian campaigns. Then you drop to like two percent, just over it. I know it's pretty crazy. You're- Ming and Portugal. Yeah, Ming and Portugal. Like, okay, I get Ming. Everybody wants to kind of let me play that cool mechanic. You know, big, never- big juggernaut Ming. You know, and it's like I don't, I don't, I don't get it. I don't know. I like more of a challenge. I don't know. I mean, I've it's never just, even played them. I don't know. Uh, but don't know. And the other one's Portugal, which I mean, I get that one because recent, you recent know, patches, DLC, like the golden century. I yeah, get that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, I don't get Ming because uh, mandate of heaven was a long time ago now. Um, and and they're, they're super strong. I don't know. I mean, I, like one of my Twitch viewers, they said, um, I, I prefer a bit of a challenge. So I've never played the Ottomans or France. I mean, I got it. I got to agree with that one. You know, honestly, um, well, I think France and the Ottomans kind of have their own challenges within them. I mean, France going for big blue blob. That's a that's that is hard. like the number one or a top three achievement that every player has. Um, I, I've got to get big big blue blob in you know in EU four. You know I've got to get that or um, the one where you conquer all the way over to Moscow in Prussia. Oh yeah, better, know, than, you, better than Napoleon. I want to try that. Better one. than Napoleon. That actually gonna be interesting. <laughs> yeah, I've been wanting to do that yeah. one too. I had a, I had a campaign. I was like halfway through and it got jacked up. So I, I definitely want to retry that one. I mean, and then the Ottomans, I just, I get that just because it's, it's the starter nation. Yeah. You can't really screw up as the Ottomans. Yeah. Get in there and learn your mechanics. 
go forth with this no tutorial that we have. And, <laughs> or, or, okay, <laughs> speaking of tutorials, I actually, this is kind of crazy to say, but I actually kind of like the Imperator Rum tutorial. I think it actually did okay at like kind of getting your feet wet with the game. Um, they did a great pe- job with that. Go, some people yeah, called go, it out. I thought it was cool. Going back, I thought it was awesome. Uh, I, I, that, that's the very first thing I did was play through as much as I could. And then I just noticed that the Imperator uh, Wiki has um, the uh, they've started releasing things finally. There's the beginner's guide starting to show up. You know, beginner tutorials, which looks like YouTube, you know, videos for those of you who are trying to learn the game more. I guess I'm going to definitely be going over these just in case. Um, I wonder. My biggest thing is I love seeing achievement stuff. Has anybody? Have they started? People started trying to help people out with achievements. Nope. Looks like nobody's tried to do that yet. But oh, do you mean like achievement guides, released. that sort of thing? Yeah, I love achievement guides. Oh my gosh, oh, okay. man, I am I am crazy about achievement guides. I mean, I like seeing you know what some of these easy ones. And I'm I'm gonna play one more. I don't know about you, but my goal for Imperator is to play one more, um, one more campaign to learn and then i'm going to jump in there and try some achievements I yeah yeah no time. i mean I, i'm playing right now who the hell am i playing as i'm playing as carthage um who are you playing. not playing as right now adrian so well i, ju- I just start my armenia campaign <laughs> i had it and then what the hell else i'm gonna do i wanted to play as i think Bactria is the next campaign i'm not sure i i might honestly i might put you forward to, to to sleep for a little while and just kind of focus on imperator Rome. i've been itching to play more imperator and i've Kind of lost interest in you four. I don't know what happened. I really don't know. In, it's in, that new game, Itis, man. I think it really is. I think I got to play the yeah, shit out of that game us. and then just be like, all right, let's go back to EU4 now. <laughs> like, no, like I was honest. seriously like, and, and you know, I know the exact feeling because not that it's happened to EU4, it's actually happening to Napoleon Total War for me. And <laughs> I, I've been like, hmm, that's my third, that's my second series. Do I really want to drop it? You know, there's all. It, it, there's a whole segment of my viewers that just love those games. So I really want to hurt them. Hey man. I mean, you know, I, I'll tell you right now, actually kind of, kind of div- divulging from EU4 into other things. I mean, um, I don't know if you know this, but my channel just hit 25,000 subscribers. What? So, yeah. Congrats, I don't know if you know that, so. A quarter of a million, right? Or a quarter of a thousand, a hundred thousand, a quarter of a million. Quarter Math. Of a Math. 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 <laughs> um and 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 honestly like i've been kind of contesting like okay do i want the views do i want the money do i want this or do i just want to play what i enjoy and i really still do stick by that like dude if you're not having fun with it yeah. i just i understand finishing campaigns i do but if you're not having fun with it don't do it well i mean i'll be honest i just kind of wrapped up the peninsular campaign okay, and that's napoleon good. Yeah, that's good i wrapped it up for the the third nation in there third if you've never nation. played no i have yeah I've played all three of them now. I, I've kind of reached the end of that. I have made some promises to do the Great War mod, uh, which I kind of want to see. I don't know if I'm just going to go in there and do one or if I'm going to do you know the major powers for each side. I'm not sure, but um, my thought process at once upon a time was that HOI4 would take over that slot. Uh, be, you know, And I might have kind of put in there some Imperator or something else because it... I think you know you, you do this more full time than I do. I, I don't get that. I don't have the ability. I, I work for those of you who don't know. I work a, an eight to five job every day, and uh, a lot of the time I'm on the road until midnight for my job. Just you know, that's part of the, this part of the job. Um, and in doing so, you run out of time to record because when you sit down to record, yeah, I could record. 30 minutes here, 30 minutes there, but that's not really effective because once you get into a groove, I mean, this this is one of those things where I can sit there and record for seven hours straight and never even feel like I recorded. You know, like, I, you know, it's, just, like, it's you know, like a runner's high. Honestly, it's kind of like a runner's yeah. high. Like you just, you get your groove after a little while. Three um, hours by and right. I've already recorded seven episodes and like, I'm like, damn, <laughs> I wanted to, I wanted to watch a movie at some point today. Like, you know, you just forget, you need, you just, and like, well, I'm done with the series for the week. Let me go see what else I can do. Oh yeah, I need to do some more recording. And then there you are for three more hours. Yep. I mean, it's just part of the, it's part of the game. But anyways, I, I think uh, no, I've been kind of thinking about. It. There's some other things I've been wanting to try. So some game, you know, I feel like a a strategy players we get too stuck into paradox. We might uh we might end up hurting ourselves. Yeah, so. yeah, and, and and I don't know. It's just it's just one of those things. Like I I'm trying to maintain a little bit of variety on the channel. Um, just so you don't get burnt out, but 
you know, even EU4 is kind of like, eh, like I played so much of it. I'm like, I'm looking for other things, you know? Yeah. And, um, it's just, it's hard. It's hard as a content creator to just, to keep variety. It's, and to keep your, your luster, you know, it's, it's hard. It's hard. Mm-hmm. Truth is. Well, I mean, you're keeping, you got to keep the eyes and you've also got to get the eyes bringing to, this is kind of turning, hey, we should do our own little filthy robot, robot salt thing, man. We should oh, just go dude, and do did it. You, did you watch that? I watched it, yes. Dude, well, I didn't watch great. it. I listened to it. I was writing back Super from Chattanooga. Super fucking informative. So, so for, for you guys at home, um, Filthy Robot, he's, he's a friend of a Roomba, and he's, he's a streamer, and he does all sorts of stuff with Civilization. Um, he had like He's a, a friend of yours and I. Come on, man. I, Anybody I, who I, talks I, like that about myself. it. I've never talked to myself. No, I don't know. I'm not saying that. Anybody yeah. who talks like that about their gaming and all that, they're a friend of ours. You know it. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, a strategy brother. <laughs> you <know? laughs> there you go. Brothers in arms. So he did, brothers he did and key, like brothers a, and keys. <laughs> he did like a like a Q and A session for like his his like Twitch channel mm-hmm. and his business and all that kind of stuff. Super fucking informative. I'll tell you right now. If you're a YouTuber, like I really should post that to people and be like, if you want to be a YouTuber or a streamer or something, watch this shit because it is it is some of the most practical, straight up blunt ass retrospection on on being a YouTuber, being a content creator that I've ever seen. I mean, he he just talks straight up. The challenges, you know, what he has to do, you know, how he enjoys it, the way his thought process. He is a he's a smart fucking dude, and it like, was cool to listen to. <laughs> I thought his thing, he, you know, and and I'll uh, not to divulge too much for those who want to go watch it and be fresh on it. You know, he was saying something, and there there there's something that happens to all YouTubers and all Twitch people when they jump in. They they usually go to Reddit, and you you gravitate towards the Reddit for Let's Play or the Reddit for Twitch. And you ask these questions of people, you're like, how do I get bigger? And what do I need to do? You know, and, and like, there's some magic potion yep. that's going to get you there. And he, and he mentioned this too. And I, I am just as guilty of this as everybody else. I, Adrian, I bet I'm sure have you done it. I mean, everybody does this thing. We go in there and we think what can make us bigger? Well, I'm just going to ask these people who apparently know it all. And you can you kind of forget these people don't know what they're talking about either. They're there to look for what you're doing too. And, he, you know, and he, and I realized something. He went to TwitchCon, the very first one ever. I debated going to this way back in the day, 2014. It was, I think, maybe yeah, 15. So. Yep. And when he when he went, he said he asked. He got to ask the question to this moderate moderate team. At the time, was big Twitch guys, and basically, he said, "How do I get bigger for somebody who's a moderate size, you know, streamer? How do I get bigger?" And they said just be yourself and do your own thing. And, you know, basically, honestly, it, it sounded like a hippie answer and <laughs> not to be, not to get onto hippies. I really am not. It's just it sounds like a hippie answer. Be yourself and don't do anything. That's not true to you. And, but that's bull crap. You know, I yep. mean, there, a lot of it is be true to you, be, be you that you want to always be that you're pushing your own brand. But at the same time, you, you've got to realize that, you know, if people aren't going to watch what you're doing, if you're doing whatever you're doing right now, it's not working, then well, it, it, you may not be it. What, what, what I, what I, what I, what I got from what he was saying, he says something. He says something that you know, it's it's a common proverb, but he really hit it home. He's just like, guys, comparison is a thief of joy. Okay, don't be yourself completely, right? If you're doing something that doesn't seem to be working, if you're if you're streaming or playing. And even you wouldn't watch yourself. Don't expect other people that are going to watch you. It's just, it's just how it is. He's just like constantly be improving, not against other people. Don't use other people's statistics or their subscriber numbers or their revenue or their views. He's just like only be improving against yourself. Be better than yourself every day, trying to change your craft, trying to refine it, you know, trying to be coming up with new things. And I was like, dude, that just fucking hit it home because the truth is I, I'm guilty of this. I don't want to say what YouTubers I watch, but there are a lot of YouTubers that I watch and I monitor, you know, how many views did they get on their videos? You know, how many, how many subscribers do they gain today? You know, how many, how much money do they make? All, all sorts of this. And I really do think it's not healthy for me to do that because I'm, I'm mm. comparing myself, right? They have things that I can't do. They have time that I don't have. And I have a time and a personality that they don't have. That's just the fucking way it is. And, and filthy really he he hit that shit home he's just like youtube is not a zero-sum game you don't win and they lose you're just different you know Mm -hmm. 
take pride in who you are, but also be constantly improving who you are. Don't just be the same thing that doesn't work, you know? And I was like, damn, dude, that shit just, it was, it was eye opening. It honestly was, it was, a, it was a beautiful thing for him to say that, you know? And, and, well, and, and, I think and he kind of said, one of the extra things he kind of said was what separates you from what, you know, don't think of everybody as your competition. That that's a big thing. But at the same time, you kind of have to as a business, okay? The way I, I mean, as a, as a businessman, I I know what it's like. You have to sit there and be like, I like if if I'm gonna if I'm gonna seriously sit there and be like, okay, why is a twenty five thousand subs and I'm at twenty five hundred? What is he doing that's different than me? Well, you know, he's playing these games. He's playing it to this level, and you, and you start you you start making these comparisons that can help and hurt you. But something to remember is that at the end of the day, you need to not treat, you know, like I don't, this is how I do it. Adrian is probably one of my, you know, Adrian and there's one other person who I watch pretty consistently. I haven't re, you know, I haven't had a chance lately because of work, but it, it it's one of those guys like, I'm going to go back and I'm going to go, okay, I'm going to go to hmm, Adrian. I'm going to go to the other persons. I'm going to go to their channels. I'm going to be like, okay, what have they released? Okay. I need, I'm going to watch this next and this next and this next. And it's one of those things where it's, it's hard not to go out there and be like, well, this is what he's doing and he's much better than me and I'm so far behind. And, and as you can see there, you know, uh, you start to get down on yourself about it, you know? And the thing is you start, you have to start realizing, well, what is he doing that makes him better? Okay. He does this. Now, what can I do to either a replicate that or become, or, or push that into my stuff and still be me? Yeah. Adrian, Adrian likes to curse in his stuff. That's Adrian's thing. Everybody knows Adrian's got Adrian has his like a sailor's mouth. <laughs> if you, if you got me out off of the screen and ask Adrian this, I cuss whenever we're getting ready to do this, uh, you know, I'm sailor mouth too, but my image is built on family friendly, plop your kids down. And it even says in my about section, plop your kids down in front of it. And you just know that there's not going to be anything in there that they're not supposed to see. Um, see, it's not, you know, it's not that way for me. Uh, just see, it's not that I, way. See, I, I put in every single video. This is mature content. You know, viewer discretion is advised. That's just, I throw it out there. That's exactly. I, and I try never to go more than PG 13 at the most, <laughs> you know, like yeah. everything I can No, it's all over the, it's all over the clothes. Nothing else happened. Um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's just, and it, you know, there's just the differences. That's what sets us apart, you know? And is that why Adrian's doing better than me? Probably not. But it's it's just one of those things where you probably you start seeing where the differences are in people, and you got to realize that your diff is your difference a good thing or a bad thing. Yeah. So I think we got on that topic a little too long. We're kind of hang you know hang nailing off. We didn't even have that anywhere on the schedule, but I think we did need to talk about it. I know. I I think it was I think it was interesting to talk about, especially like you know like me hitting twenty five thousand subs. It's like well that's that's cool. I'm I'm really proud of that. But at the same time, it's like I know. Every single day, I should be thinking, how can I do this better, right? How can I be mm. better than myself yesterday? And right. it's, it's, you know, I, I don't want to say, you know, compare yourself to somebody who's 30,000, try and get there, or compare yourself to somebody who's 100,000, try and get there. You know, I, I don't think that's the way you should look at it. I don't think that's the way you should look at YouTube and, and bettering yourself. Don't, don't better yourself to be as good as somebody else. That's just, that's just reality. Don't do that. I don't think I mean, it's good. You want me to tell you how I did it? You know. uh, just flat out, guys. This is how I do it. All right. Uh, for those that this is for you aspiring YouTubers, go out there and put down milestones. Okay. I was at, on the first day I started, I was at zero subscribers. How long did it take me to get to 10? How long, how long did it take me to get to 25, 50, 100, 150, 200, 250, 300, 400, 500, 600, you know, and how long did it take? Then go in there and measure how many days it took to get to that next one. And one thing I realize is it's like a ball rolling. It's like a snowball rolling down a hill. It starts out really small, but eventually it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And that's bigger as in how fast it's going. So, I mean, it, it, the thing is, if you're continuing to see speed increasing, you're continuing to see growth. Thus, you know what you're doing is right. Now, sometimes you'll go in there and realize, hmm, I'm going to make a tiny tweak here. I noticed I made a tweak when I went into Paradox Games and started recording. them. That ball took off. It, it's like somebody put two jets on the side of it and took it and let it go. <laughs> and that's because so the game I was playing at the time, Supreme Lord 2020 and games like it, they had a fan base, but they didn't have a very big one, not the one the way that Paradox did. 
So when I did that and I pushed it off down the hill, and I'm not the greatest at Paradox games at all, but for some reason, you know, people want to watch those so much. Even somebody who's not good at it, they still want to watch. And Adrian is somebody who's better at Paradox games. They like to watch you. The same reason why people watch want to watch Arumba and Quill and Provis and these other guys who are really, you know, good YouTubers. They're good at their games and they play their games. And the people are like, hmm, they I that's they, they watch Arumba because Arumba's doing like you know, quantum physics in his brain <laughs> as he's putting this on the screen. And you're, and you're just like, I don't want to play paradox games anymore when you're done watching them, but you learned so much by yeah. doing it. But that's yeah. why people watch a Roomba, you know, in, and, and that's, and that's totally okay. Like people can watch a Roomba yeah. and they can't watch me or they didn't watch you. And, and, and that was one of the things that it took me so long they to understand, fuck them. you know, <laughs> just well, it's just, it's, it's just, you know, for a while yeah. I always kind of wondered, because Aruma was, was a big inspiration for me, and I always kind of wondered, you know, how can I be like him? And and it's like one of those one of those steps that moved me forward as a creator was just like, dude, you don't have to be like him, you know, you don't have to be exactly like him. You don't even have to replicate a success; just be your own success, you know. And uh, it took a long everybody's time. Everybody's got their leave. own road, and every, yeah, everybody's, everybody's got their own road. Yeah. Some people, you know, some people's roads just take longer than others. I mean, and some people's roads never go. That's true. Some people's road, somebody, some people's roads is like, you know, that's you, that you're talking about in the Hobbit. Like, you know, you never know where the road might go. You sometimes your road might go to the gate and back. Okay. Some people don't true. have very long roads, True. but let me tell you, take, you know, do your right, do your path. And maybe what am I doing in dude? What am I doing in YouTube? Okay. I need to go into like writing those quotes for people. Uh, those motivational okay. quotes. Yeah. A yeah. motivational speaker. There you go. I'm yeah. done. YouTube's over. And, uh, ah, no. I, I don't know. It's, and, and I've been thinking about it myself. It's like, okay, there will be probably a day when it's like YouTube is, you know, it's, it's done. I mean, it's like you've, you've moved on with life and that's okay. Right. You know, that's, that's, that's for it's your, it's a hobby. And you know, sometimes people change and sometimes their hobbies, they come to an end. That's totally that fine. day scares me so bad. Oh, I, I kind of wonder when it is for myself. Cause Jesus, man, I've is been it? doing this for over three years now. And you're like, fuck, I, I really can't believe that I've actually done this for so long. It's kind of hard to believe. I know, like six. It's like thinking um, it could be as done as six days, or it could be six years. You never know, and yeah. you're just kind of like, who knows? It could be just the next big, you know. Because let me say, in unless you're at the level of say your PewDiePie's or, or your guys who are making, you know, literally hundreds Millions. of thousands of dollars, even I would say hundreds. I, I would say the second you start sitting there going. I'm making sixty, seventy-five thousand dollars a year at this. I think at that point you can be like, "This is what I'm doing. This is me." Um, at the same time, though, I don't see how long will YouTube last. You know, I mean, eventually things evolve. Things will go away. Things change. Just yeah. some. You don't don't forget, guys. There there used to be somebody who pressed a button on an elevator for you. That don't happen no more. <laughs> they moved. They moved, a, they moved they, a switch. There used to be that guy in the bathroom that gave you a towel. <laughs> Yeah, there used to be that guy. You know what that guy is doing yeah. right now? Something else. I don't know what he's doing, but he's doing. He's not doing that. So, That's funny. all right, we we got to move on. We got to move on. Let's no, push no, on. Actually, we got. I, I wanted to talk about. Um, let's see. Next topic. I want to talk about. I don't know if you know much about the Galaxy Fold. I mentioned it last week. I don't even know what that the, is. What the is Sam, that? The Samsung Galaxy Fold, the folding phone. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I thought you were. I thought you were talking about like Galaxy of Fold, and I was like, no, 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 no. What game is this? Yeah, yeah the, the Samsung Galaxy Fold. Yeah. Uh, what what happened this time to them? Are they so, still breaking? No, so they're, so they're still breaking, right? And they've actually recalled all of the review units, all of them, and they've <laughs> actually delayed the launch. There's there's no longer. It was gonna. I think it was gonna release like this week, right? <laughs> they've delayed the launch, and they're actually gonna push the release date out. They actually have not determined a release date yet. Like at wow. all. So it was, it's pretty crazy. I've been seeing a lot of tech YouTubers and things like that. Just, they're like, yeah, I had to send back my review unit. You know, um, they're going to, they're going to reconfigure the, the galaxy fold. They're going to do some different stuff. And, and there's currently no release date. I was like, damn, that's just crazy. But let's be <laughs> honest though. That's the other end of what we were talking about earlier. That fits right in with releasing your product early and on time to meet what everybody's talking about and it not be complete or to go out there and, and, and pull something in and say that I need to, I need to be, have it yep. right. Well, I guess the difference is when you're dealing with a $2,000 phone, <laughs> um, and, and, and I'll that give bit, it to that bitch better be right. I got, I got mad respect 
that Samson had the balls to say, guys, we got we got to get these back. We got to change some stuff, you know? Well, let's look at last time that Samsung didn't do that and people's car, like faces were yeah, set yeah, on yeah. fire. Yeah, yeah, Those phones that were, you know, being exploded and shit, you know? Yeah. There's and cars going up in flame because, because their the phone, phone <laughs> fucking exploded. Like, what? Well, you know? And and so I thought that was interesting. I I thought that was interesting. Um we can maybe tick some people off or yeah. we could have faces blow. I mean, yeah, so yeah. I, I don't know. And, and, and people are saying they're like, you know, some people were just like, Oh my God, Samsung, like you knew this would happen. You know, why did you take the risk and all that kind of stuff? And then other people are saying like, dude, Samsung was the first major company with a foldable phone. I mean, you know, or well, a foldable let's think about it too. Foldable smartphone. Maybe, you know, you had somebody earlier said that maybe it just needed to get into a bigger pool of people and people at Samsung were like, Hey, this is how you open it. This is how you play with this. This is what you do with it. And they never like their testers in house never could break it because they were new how to operate it. Then you give it to people who don't know. And yep. immediately their first thing is like, Oh no, no pull. Oh, I wasn't supposed to do that. <laughs> you know, like they don't know you shouldn't, let's be honest. This is a phone. You should, by this point, I mean, I've got two right here. Okay. By now you should know how to use these things, right? Yep. You know, you shouldn't have to have instructions. And, and, and you know. actually, you know, it's kind of, it kind of going back to what my, what my Twitch viewers said about Imperator to realm. Like there's a lot of issues that you, you won't know are issues until you put it out yeah. into the wild. There's things that people will object to that, you know, your beta testers and your game developers didn't. It's just how it is. No matter how much preparation you do, you can't prepare for everything. Yep. I guess there you go. And yeah. I guess in their case. Yeah. And, and so that's I, a $2,000 that, $2, investment. I got, I got that's a lot of they money. Just, they said they're like, okay, for $2,000, we're going to have to take this back and, and we're going to have to revise it. Let's just, let's just fucking yeah. do it. You know, don't release it yet. And I was like, all right, I got, I got some respect for that. They, they took the risk. They had the balls to say, we got to work on it more, you know? Right. I, I, I'd be kind of surprised what other companies would do. If it's Apple, it's full steam ahead. See, that's, that's what I was going to say too. <laughs> I would, I would probably agree with that. If it was Apple, they'd probably just say, oh no, no, no. This product's fine. <laughs> no, the problem is you, yeah. not, not us. It's you. you know? no. I mean, I mean, people still complain I mean, about the MacBook Pro keyboards. You know, people still complain about overheating issues and shit with their with their MacBooks and stuff like that. And I'm like, I mean, dude, these problems have been out for years, years. They've been having these problems, and still Apple just kind well, of. Well, it's a, it's a it's a singular product. It's something that we got in China that was the problem, and we can't figure out that exact thing. It, it's a it's an, a long winded BS answer that they just don't want to answer. So it's interesting. Yeah. So, all right. Um, Let's see. We got it. We got a couple more minutes. Anything else you wanted to to wrap up the show on? I want to go into conspiracy theories. All right. You got you got eight minutes. Let's do it. I got eight minutes for this. So I, I sent this over, and a lot of you guys probably have seen. You know, Adrian did it on his channel. I did it on mine. Uh, Jurassic World Evolution. We got this beautiful Olympic sized swimming pool that was two inches deep, and for about six hours, I was so happy. I was, <laughs> I cried, people, when I saw this game. I was like, it's so beautiful, you know? And I, and I got tears as a grown man. <laughs> <laughs> and then I started getting tears of frustration and anger and every other, just because that game was just not complete. Um, and and let me tell shallow. you. Very shallow. It was very shallow. Frontier is an amazing, they're an amazing developer. They have done some great things, but that's not their best work. But it was obvious what happened, and I will speak up for Frontier on this. They were probably given one year to create that game. Mm -hmm. They were told the movie comes out in the, the Jurassic world uh the fallen kingdom comes out in a year um you need to create this game and you need to get out at launch the same time we gotta we gotta build on the hype okay um let's do you know you, you know they're probably like okay we, we could do something um let's just do it you know and they went out there and they released what they released we got what we got so there's still a pretty good community around that game though despite the problems it had um and so jumping into the world of conspiracy, a 4chan user came out and, and honestly, I can't even quote the, the post anymore. It was there. What I think it was there. What day did I send it to you, Adrian? Oh, dude, that was like, yeah. I sent it to him the yeah Friday before last. It was a 4chan leak, you know, possible leak for Jurassic World Evolution. And it kind of talked about 
here's some of the things that are going to happen, you know, and it was, it was from before they even announced what's coming in the patches and there are certain things were going to happen saying, he, you know, this guy's like, I know people at frontier and this is what I was told. Um, you know, that we're going to get this new dinosaur pack coming out in a week. And, it's going to have these certain dinosaurs and it's going to, you know, they're all like meteors or, you know, carnivores, whatever. And it's like, we're going to get these certain things. And then here's their roadmap for fixing the game. And it's like, Oh, but here's the other roadmap for new games. You know, and it was kind of like, and you have to read it and you're like, well, that's yet. Yeah, okay. Some of this stuff doesn't make sense. Some of this is like, there's no way they're doing this. And then next thing you know, they released their, an unexpected carnivore pack that we didn't know we were getting. I know. Yeah. I know <laughs> it was interesting. Yeah. And I was like, you know, it's kind of like, whoa, 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 this is coming true. And you're like, but no, it can't be right. And then at the, one of the number one things was their next game that was going to come out from Frontier called Planet Zoo. And they dropped their release trailer last week. And I think I immediately sent something to Adrian. Like, do you see this? <laughs> like this, this is something, you know, like it's almost like somebody sitting there telling you that, uh, you know, Osama bin Laden's not dead. And then like, <laughs> next thing you know, Osama bin Laden comes over like on Fox news or CNN and like another video. And you're like, I told, did you see this? You know, it, it's kind of like, you know, you feel like you got the inside scoop and I kind of felt like I had an inside scoop here because this came out. Now, this is all I can talk about. Um, because I'm having to remember a lot of this, but they talked about, the pro- the projection of that game what, what's what's about to happen to Jurassic World Evolution it's kind of like we're gonna they're gonna start getting some terrain tools something that's really 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 been asked for um, one of the big problems is that the maps are too you know you can't do anything with the maps yeah. and they're, they're, too they're small. very constrained they're very constrained and they and they gave this <laughs> crap that the consoles can't take it maybe that is maybe that isn't I don't I mean, agree. I- to, to be fair, I dude, don't play Ju- console. Jurassic World Operation Genesis or Jurassic Park Operation Genesis, the the previous d- dude, you can do anything in that fucking game, and that was that was on the original Xbox. Yeah, you know, so I, like, I don't buy the argument PlayStation that consoles too. can. Yeah, and and the PlayStation. Yeah, yeah, that 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 was. I don't I mean, buy that, that consoles can man handle it. You know, I'm yeah, sure I don't buy that. that. Not you know the graphics loads too much. And I'm like, okay, well then why don't we want you do like on a PC and dial down the graphics down down the resolution yeah you know something like that you know why not and i think the thing is you know and it kind of became like a it's kind of like okay so they're getting terrain tools we're getting new you know we're going to get a new jurassic park vehicle you know there's going to be a jurassic park ride through like an actual get in the car and ride through the paddocks you know oh that's sick that's cool changing of the past i was like you know they brought that something else like gyroscopes or something but like the new things that they're talking yep. about. And I'm just like, wow, that's pretty, you know, I was like that they're listening to people. We had a yep. huge conversation on this a week ago, listening to us. But the other thing that was really kind of cool with it is that the new games that they tease, which this planet, this planet zoo, I'm excited. which is like, I'm excited. I'm excited. Yeah. Zoo tycoon. I know uh, that was my shit, dude. That was my shit back in the day. Zoo tycoon. Can you imagine the, gra- like the graphics <laughs> of Jurassic world evolution with, Oh, dude, with like, like an actual type. zoo? Dude, that'd be sick. Oh, that'd like that good. would look good. And the thing is, they, I mean, what they, t- they, now Frontier always has this beautiful cinematic trailer. Just looked gorgeous. And it kind of had a, it kind of was showing things that they're already doing. And you see they're doing, they have terrain tools and stuff like that. <laughs> Funny thing is listening to the Jurassic World Evolution community just get pissed off because they've got terrain tools already, like in this game built in. I was like, you do realize it's not the same engine. They're building this one on top of, you know, they're, they're really learning from everything. But there are some really cool other things. Um, specifically, I'm going to talk a little bit more about the Jurassic Park stuff just because that's what really, you know, lo- you know, really, I, I think that's where I'm at. And I think uh, one of the things I, ca- I kind of realized is that probably about two years from now, there will be a Jurassic World Evolution 2. I um, think that was kind of the bigger thing on there to notice um and you think what's coming out what's two years from now well two years from now is the next is the last in the new trilogy of jurassic world films it looks good it looks like it's something that's gonna definitely have to happen and you gotta imagine now that the developer has been get will be have given what three four years to maybe five years to develop games now for them it will be what we want it to be it, it may still have universal constraints 
it may still be a game in a box, you know, in a box at Universal set up the yep. imaginary box, <laughs> but it's probably still going to be better than what we got. Um, there may not be any modding tools. That's where the box really comes from. But I understand the needs for such a modding thing anyway. And we might jump into more of what why Jurassic World Evolution is bad um, in the future. But just for now, just understand it's in a box. It's imaginary because the modding inability. Yep. Um, so, I mean, updated graphics, you know, things like that will probably have come up then, which imagining that game with even better graphics is mind boggling. Um, and then also on there was a survival game which I thought was really kind of unique. Um, Frontier has not done one yet, I don't think. Um, I mean, I was, I was going to say, is Frontier, they're the same people who made Elite Dangerous, right? The um, like the space think, shooter game? Sure. I think so. I'm going to... I don't know if you call that survival necessarily, machine. but, um, you know, it's it's very open world. Like, that, that much is clear. So Fr- Frontier does have some pretty substantial experience with with like open world i don't want to say survival but definitely like you know crafting and and getting resources that sort of thing frontier developments i guess that's them yeah yeah elite dangerous yeah so i I gotta admit if you're gonna if you're gonna throw out them some sort of survival game i think they could do it i'm actually really excited for that yeah i mean i'm kind of interested when or where it could be um i think maybe we should just jump into like i think what june's coming up right i think in june we should just do a complete an all jurassic world you know shit i, I actually here. i wouldn't mind playing that game again i still have it on my on my computer i mean i could probably ask uh, my con i have a contact at frontier i could probably ask him for you some, need to share that contact because they will not answer me back really about who that yeah they well i can't get the reddit folks to talk to me about it so okay yeah I, i'll um i don't know i, I was thinking I'd, I'd like to play that game more like to be fair i it's just it's shallow as shit i mean well let's be honest i don't see a, <laughs> i don't see a reason to honestly I, I i've been following that reddit forever and people are still ticked off the best thing that they've recently they've recently gotten is a you can now take better pictures oh god <laughs> so you can now share this beautiful imagery that yeah. you get your ankles deep in i mean i I like i like jurassic world and i like dinosaurs and i like frontier they're good people but jesus christ that game is shallow as fuck (laughs) again you and everybody shares the blame between is it frontier or is it universal i don't know and it's universal so we'll we'll see (laughs) we'll see man yeah but yeah and uh uh, we're not gonna uh, and we're not gonna talk about avengers let's not yeah no i don't know what We'll, we'll talk about it when you see it how about that I won't see it for so long. Oh God. Yeah. <laughs> unless, unless somebody knows where I can get like jank copy of Captain Marvel. This, this is all <laughs> and, I'm going to say. Thanos did nothing wrong. <laughs> Thanos did nothing wrong. That's all I'm going to say. Thanos did. Really? Nothing wrong. I heard he was like a farmer in Zambia. Is that right? That, that's the latest running rumor mill right now. Thanos did nothing wrong. <laughs> I choose to believe that, that he is in Zambia on a farm. That, that's where he was at the end of infinity war. And that's where he's at. Okay. I'm calling it now. <laughs> All right, guys, I think that's all we have for you for this episode of Eat, Sleep, Game, Repeat. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, Brent, you want to say a few words? Everybody, appreciate it. You know, uh, definitely. I'm glad we got a little bit of uh, people asking us some questions here and there. Don't forget to do so when these things hit YouTube. Uh, We're still figuring out a way to get them over to both channels so that everybody can kind of listen in. But don't be afraid to ask some questions down there. We will refer to them in the next episode, or if it's really small, we'll answer it right then and there, however we feel like doing it. But uh, otherwise, again, for episode number two, I think this this thing's a good, nice little wrap. What do you think? I think so. I think so. I I like where the show is going, honestly. I I just awesome. I like being able to talk about things, and it's, it's nice. It's very nice. Yes. So, all right, guys. Habit forms next week. So, we'll see y'all all then. All right, guys. We'll see you next Sunday, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern, right? Yeah. You're, you're right. You're good. Yep. Got it. We'll see you guys then. All Thank right. you so much for joining us, guys. And uh, you'll see us on YouTube if you can't catch the Twitch stream. And uh, we'll hope to see you soon. Thanks so much. All right. See y'all.